Imagine a machine so powerful it could unravel the secrets of the universe in a heartbeat. A device that doesn't just compute but communes with forces we can't see, locked away in dimensions we barely dare to name. This isn't some sci-fi fever dream. It's here, now, whispered into existence by the tech titans at Microsoft. A quantum chip unlike anything humanity's ever forged, birthed from a mysterious particle that dances on the edge of reality itself. After 17 years of clandestine research, they've cracked open a door. To what, they won't fully say. But the air is thick with unease. Because this isn't just about solving equations or curing diseases. This is about something ancient, something otherworldly, humming in the dark heart of a palm-sized portal that leads into another dimension. Microsoft calls it a breakthrough. A quantum chip that cracks open doors to places we should not peek into. They say it runs on a new state of matter, something they cooked up after 17 years of digging in the shadows. This is not about making your phone faster. It is about pulling power from the edges of reality, like Revelation 9-11 warns us about. This chip is small, fits in your hand, but Microsoft says it is packed with millions of bits called qubits. These are not normal bits like in your laptop. They are quantum, alive with strange rules, and built from something called the Majorana particle. Microsoft brags they tame this weird speck, a half-real, half-ghost thing that can blink out or stay put. They say it is a big deal because it is steady, not shaky like other qubits, and can scale up fast. They are aiming for a million of them, enough to solve problems too big for every computer on Earth combined. But here is the chill. Where is that power really coming from? They say it is science, but it feels like they are fishing in waters too deep, pulling up answers from somewhere else. Microsoft calls this a new state of matter, a mix of stuff like indium arsenide and aluminum, twisted into what they name a topo conductor. They say it is tougher, keeps the qubits quiet and strong, so they do not mess up. This chip can figure out stuff with 30 or 40 bits of matter in a snap, stuff that would take forever otherwise. Microsoft is all proud, saying it is years, not decades, from changing everything. But that speed, it is too quick. Feels like something is lending a hand from the other side. Think about the Bible, where Revelation 9-11 says, and they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon, a ruler rising from a dark hole with a swarm of tormentors that twist nature into something strange and half-formed. This Majorana particle in Microsoft's chip feels too close to that. Microsoft says they made it, measured it, and took control, building it piece by piece like they're shaping a new world. They boast of endless power, perfect fixes, and machines that outthink us all. Now, listen to what their own scientists have to say about it. What would the world look like with a computer that could accurately model the laws of nature? That's the promise of quantum computing. But there have always been limitations. Now, as one of our longest running research projects, our team at Microsoft has been able to take a subatomic particle that has only been theorized until now and not only observe it, but control it, creating an entirely new material and a new architecture for quantum computing. One that can scale to millions of qubits on a single chip. This is not a work of science. It's a work of science and art. I gotta be honest, some of these ideas are a little science fiction sounding. It will solve problems unsolvable by the combined power of all the world's compute today, and promises to revolutionize fields such as medicine, material science, and our understanding of the natural world. Our first quantum processor based on this architecture is the Majorana 1. At the core of a quantum computer are these qubits. Qubits are like our classical bits, right? These are essentially zeros and ones um, in a transistor. Um, and we need the analog of that in quantum computing. The analog is a qubit, a quantum bit, that serves as that core information unit. It's where we store the information and then we process on those qubits uh, to create computation and ultimately you know, get solutions back out. 
Now there's many different ways, right, to create a qubit. The reason quantum computing has been so slow to progress is that the industry has been struggling with problems making qubits reliable and resistant to noise. Progress has been incremental. We see the states of matter every day. Solids keep their shape, liquids vary but keep their volume, gases expand to fill the space they're in, all defined ultimately by how their atoms behave. But what if there were more? What if, under the right conditions, you could engineer more? States that have only ever been theorized, that would change how subatomic particles actually behave? A hundred years ago, mathematicians predicted one such new state of matter, the topological state. And since then, researchers have been looking for a very specific, very useful quasi-particle within it, the Majorana particle. Last year, we were able to observe it for the first time. And this year, we're able to control it and use its unique properties to build a topoconductor, a new type of semiconductor that operates also as a superconductor. With this material, we can build a whole new foundational architecture for our quantum computers, a topological core, allowing us to scale to not tens or hundreds of qubits on a chip, but millions, all in the palm of your hand. Majorana's theory showed that mathematically it's possible to have a particle that is its own antiparticle. That means you can take two of these particles and you bring them together, and they could annihilate and there's nothing left. Or you could take two particles and you bring them together and you just have two particles. Sometimes it's nothing, the zero state, and sometimes it's the electron, the one state. So it really has taken quite some thinking, right? Some time to design a device, design a chip that can enable measurement of this literally elusive particle. We've designed a chip that is able to measure the presence of Majorana. Majorana allows us to create a topological qubit. A topological qubit is reliable, small, and controllable. This solves the noise problem that creates errors in qubits. Now that we have these topological qubits, we're able to build an entirely new quantum architecture, the topological core, which can scale to a million topological qubits on a tiny chip. Every single atom in this chip is placed purposefully. It is constructed from ground up. It is entirely a new state of matter. Think of us as building the picture by painting it atom by atom. In a regular chip, the computation is done using electrons. We don't use electrons for compute. We use Majoranas for computing. It's an entirely new particle. It's half electron. When we look at the design of this chip, Right, first of all, you can fit so much on just a small form factor, right? This chip can store over a million qubits, right? Over a million can fit on just this small form factor. In addition, we don't want to wait centuries or millennia for a solution. And so this chip also offers the right speed to get solutions from the chip in a reasonable, efficient you know, amount of time. That's the beauty in this qubit design, the topological qubit. It has the right size, the right speed, and the right type of controllability. And all of that together means that it has an ability to scale like no other. We call the ages of mankind by materials. We've talked about the Stone Age, we've talked about the Bronze Age and the Iron Age, the Steel Age, the Silicon Age. Materials define our culture, define our mankind, define our progress. Thus, what could be more powerful than having a machine that can let you radically change the way we work with materials? Our leadership has been, has been working on this program for the last 17 years. It is the longest running research program in the company.
And after 17 years, uh, when we are showcasing our results, we are show showcasing results that are not just incredible, they're real. They are real because they will fundamentally redefine how the next stage of the quantum journey takes place. We're at the cusp of a quantum age, and Majorana One is just the beginning. <laughs>